Welcome back to the energy conversion lectures. In the previous three lectures, we have provided a general introduction about the electromechanical energy conversion systems. Also, we provided a detailed explanation and mathematical derivation for the field energy of the single excited electromechanical energy conversion systems. In this lecture, a graphical method derivation of the mechanical force for the single excited systems will be provided. Based on the previous lectures, we have collected enough information to be ready to understand what happens if we create some movement in the single excited electromechanical energy conversion system. Let's use the single excited relay system shown to help us understand the concept. The movement of the system can be represented by using psi i characteristic. The first magnetization curve x1 represents the relay magnetic circuit at the original displacement or position x1 where the air gap is large. The second magnetization curve X2 represents the relay magnetic circuit after the movement to the second position X2 where the air gap is smaller and the moving part is stopped. As mentioned before, the energy balanced equation DWE equal DWM plus DWF will be used to derive the mechanical energy relationship and then the force relationship. Basically, if we identify the change of the field energy DWF and the change of the electrical energy DWE during the movement, the change of the mechanical energy DWM can be identified. Note that the change of these three energies will represent the change during the movement from the initial position x1 to the final position x2. Before going further in the mechanical movement explanation, at the beginning, let's first assume that the moving part is held fixed at position x1 and it is prevented from the movement. Now, if we apply an input voltage V, a current I will be flowing through the resistance R and the coil. As you can see, the current I will increase at certain time constant tau equal to L over R until it reaches steady state point where the current I is equal to I1 and equal to V over R. This steady state operation can be represented by point A at the Psi I curve where the moving part is still not moving at the position X equal X1 and the current I is equal to I1 equal V over R. The stored energy or field energy at point A where the magnetic field linkage is equal to Psi1 can be represented by WF1. This stored energy can be calculated by integrating the element I D Psi from 0 to Psi1 and this will be equal to the area OABO. Now if the moving part is released and is allowed to be moved, the moving part will move from position X1 to position X2 and follow the trajectory A, A dash. Let's represent the trajectory A, A dash by path 1. As you can see, during the period of path 1, the current will be reduced from I1 to I2. 
and the magnetic field linkage is increased from Psi 1 to Psi 2. The current I is decreased from I1 to I2 because the magnetic field linkage and the inductance have been increased too much during the movement as mentioned before during the second lecture of the electromechanical energy conversion chapter. The stored energy at point A dash where the magnetic field linkage is equal to Psi 2 can be represented by WF2. This stored energy can be calculated by integrating the element I D Psi from 0 to Psi 2 and this will be equal to the area O A dash C O. Once the moving part is stopped at point A dash, the magnetic field linkage and the current I will increase following the trajectory A dash D until reach the steady state condition at point D. Note that the current during this period will increase at time constant of tau equal to L over R until reach the steady state current I1. Also, note that the mechanical power during the trajectory A dash D is equal to zero. In other words, there is no movement during the trajectory A dash D. Therefore, there is no electromechanical energy conversion during the trajectory A dash D. Basically, we are going to focus only during the movement from A to A dash. This concept has been explained in detail during the previous lectures. The change of the stored energy during the movement between A and A dash can be represented by DWF and it is equal to the difference between WF2 and WF1 as follows. Note that the change of the stored energy DWF represents the movement from X1 to X2 position and it is equal to the difference between the two areas O A dash C O and the area O A B O. The change in electrical energy DWE during the movement from X1 to X2 can be calculated by integrating the element I D Psi from Psi1 to Psi2 and this will be equal to the green area A A dash C B A. Now since the change of the electrical energy DWE and the change of the stored energy DWF are already identified, the change of the mechanical energy DWM can be identified by reforming the balance equation as follows. As you can see, the mechanical energy DWM is equal to the sum of all areas and it is equal to the red area O A A dash O. In general, mechanical power is equal to the force times the velocity and it is equal to dWm over dt equal fm times dx over dt. Basically, the change in position x dx over dt represent the velocity. This equation can be simplified by dWm equal fm dx. That means that the area OA A dash O is equal to fm dx. Therefore, the mechanical force is equal to fm equal area OA A dash O over x2 minus x1. It is worth to mention here that the motion through path 1 from A to A dash represents the actual movement 
and operation of the single excited relay system. Using this approach or path one, considered a general method for identifying the force expression of the single excited system. However, our goal is to derive expression for the mechanical force in terms of the change of the field energy or the change of the co-energy. To do that, we need to select different paths from curve x1 to curve x2. Note that any path or movement trajectory such as path 2 or path 3 from curve x1 to curve x2 can also meet and satisfy the balance equation dwe equal dwm plus dwf if the electromechanical energy conversion system is assumed to be lossless in other words if the electromechanical energy conversion system is assumed to be lossless then any path from curve x1 to curve x2 is valid and satisfy the balance equation that means if we select any path from curve x1 to curve x2 the left part of the balance equation dwe will be equal to the sum of the mechanical energy plus the field energy based on this concept we should be able to derive mechanical force expressions with respect to the change of field energy dwf or change of co-energy dwf dash using path 2 or path 3 as we will see later in the next lecture now since the plan of the next lecture is to derive expressions for the mechanical force based on the change of the field energy dwf or the change of the co-energy dwf dash therefore it is good idea to know what are the main variables that impact the change of the field energy and the change of the co-energy during the movement from x1 to x2 in case of the change of the field energy we have proved before during field energy lecture that the change in the field energy dwf is function to only one variable which is the magnetic field linkage psi when there is no movement this relationship can be written as shown however when we have movement the field energy will be function to two variables the magnetic field linkage psi and the position x this relationship can be derived using the energy balance equation as follows as you can see this equation tell us that the change of field energy dwf depends on two independent variables the magnetic field linkage psi and the displacement or position x therefore the change of field energy can also be expressed as follows now in case of the co-energy the change in co-energy is function to only one variable which is the change of the current i when there is no movement however when we have movement the co-energy will be function to two variables the current i and the position x this relationship can be derived by using the relationship between the field energy wf and the co-energy wf dash this relationship is already explained in previous lectures after some mathematical steps and simplification the following equation can be achieved as you can see this equation tell us that the change of co-energy dwf dash depends on two independent variables 
the current i and the displacement or position x. Therefore, the co-energy can be expressed as follows. As mentioned before, the goal of the next lecture is to derive expression for the mechanical force in terms of the change of field energy or change of co-energy. Let's conclude this lecture at this point and will continue in the next lecture. Let me know if you have any question. Also, make sure to subscribe to this channel so you do not miss any lecture. Thanks for listening. I am Ihsan Al Nabi and it was a pleasure sharing this lecture with you. Thank you.